Hello again, YouTubers. Welcome back to The Board Game Captain. I'm your host, The Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to play Schottentotten. Now, this particular copy of Schottentotten I purchased at a friendly local game store in Glen Ellen called TPK Games. That's Glen Ellen, Illinois. If you happen to be in or near Glen Ellen, Illinois, check them out. Nice little store. Now, uh, Shot and Totten is a two-player abstract card game in which both players are taking the parts of uh, warring Scottish clans that are fighting over their border and trying to move the border stones that mark the border. So, Shot and Totten was designed by Reiner Knizia, and this particular edition of Shot and Totten was published by Yellow Games. Now, Shot and Totten is for two players. It is in, for ages eight and up, and it is a 20 minute game. So let's start there. Now, obviously there's not much to talk about with the player count. This is a strictly two player game. The ages eight and up, I mean, if, if you're old enough to understand the concept of poker hands, you're old enough to play shot and time. So you don't, I mean, it's it's not a very complicated game. And for the, for the 20 minutes, that's actually a pretty good estimate. Uh, this is a, is a quick filler game. You can play a few games of this in between other games or in with a bunch of other filler games if you're looking to play a bunch of small games. Uh, this is a, a, a very quickly played and easy to understand, quick to learn game. So let's have a look at what's in the box. So the first thing you get in the box is the rule book. Now the rule book is full color and it is full of illustrated examples on the proper way to play, uh, and it, it fully describes in clear, concise manner uh, how to play and how to do each part of the turn. This is a well done rule book. This is how you want your rule book to be. It is 15 pages long. It is it is uh, well paced. It keeps your attention so you, so you don't find yourself with your mind wandering while you're reading it, and lots of full page diagrams. These are great. So, very good rule book. The next component I want to show you is the border stones. Now you have these tiles, and you line them up in the center of the table, and each one shows the border along with a rune stone on it. Uh, some of them have funny things on them. They're all a little different, so that they keep some variety. And this is what you're fighting over. You're playing cards to fight over them. Now the main point of the game is that you play poker type hands on each stone. Uh, these are some quick reference cards to keep uh, that you keep in front of you so you can recall the the which poker hands are better than others. So as you see here, the most valued hand is the color run, which of course in poker would be a straight flush. Now if you both have a color run, of course the higher value color run wins. Then there's three of a kind. Then there's color, which in poker would be a flush. Then there's a run, which would be a straight. And then the lowest uh, possible hand is a sum. And now a sum can only beat another sum. And then, of course, it only beats it if you add all the numbers together and your sum total is higher than your opponent's sum total. Now, there are two decks of cards. The regular game uses this deck of cards with this back here. And the front of the cards in the regular game all have, uh, they, they have a suit, which is mainly represented by the color on the numbers. So that is the blue suit there. That is a blue seven. Uh, this would be a red eight, a purple six. And just to show you, the illustrations are the same for the different suits there. There's a red six. Now, I like the illustrations. They're, they're a little comical. Uh, and, and a bit cartoony, but they're fun. They're 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 humorous, and you, uh, that's basically what the deck looks like. So again, here's a blue four. There's also some green cards. There's a green five. So that's what the regular deck of cards looks like. Now there's a second deck of cards, but the second deck is uh, much smaller and is only usable for a more advanced version of the game. The second deck's back looks like that. And on the front, most of the cards don't have numbers. Instead, they have symbols because these cards are able to do special things for you if you play them. So that's a look at all of the components of Shot and Totten. So now let's head on over to the table and I'm going to show you how you play a game of Shot and Totten. Then we're going to come back 
I'm going to tell you how it feels. I'm going to review it. I'm going to rate it. And we're going to get a second opinion from Len. Okay, so here we can see a setup for a basic game of Shot and Totten. The deck is on this side of the border wall, and over here you have the border with the stone that stones on each of the tiles that we are actually playing for. Each player has been dealt a hand of six cards. Your cards are made up of cards from the six different suits, and the suits are numbered one through nine. So on your turn, you must play a card at one of the stones and then draw a card. You get to take a stone, for instance, if I took this stone and I put it behind my cards, only if the three cards for each player has been played at that stone and I am the winner, or if I'm able to prove that it's impossible, completely impossible by the cards that are on the table for my opponent to beat me. So for instance, if my opponent was trying to get three of a kind there, and I can show that all the other of the numbers that he was trying to get three of a kind with are already on the table, and I've already got three of a kind there, and it's impossible for him to get three of a kind, so he's gonna have to settle for a lesser hand there. I can say, well, look, you've got two of your, your sixes, but, the, but all the other sixes are out, all four other sixes are out on the table here, so my three threes win it, and then I can take the stone. And that's how you play. So let's see a few turns. I'll show, I'll show you how it goes. So I'm gonna take a quick look at my hand, and I'm going to play a five there. Now, when you're playing, you're trying to either be the first person to win three stones in a row or five total stones. The first person to either win three stones in a row or five total stones wins the game. So I play my card and I draw another card. And then player number two takes a look at their hand. And they're going to play an eight, a yellow eight there. So now player number one has a look and plays a six there. Player number two's turn. going to play a second eight there and then player number one is going to play a a seven there. So now player number one has a run there, a five, six, seven, which is the not a very good hand, but it's something, and, and it's something to go for on that on that uh, stone there. It's a start. So they've done that and they're gonna draw a card. So now player number two has a look at that and they say, you know what? That's not that hard to beat. I can beat that. So they're gonna play green one there. Now with the three of a kind that the they're going for with the eights there, the only thing that, that player number one could beat them with would be a, a color run or a straight flush. So they're going to start trying to go for that. So they're going to drop a seven and draw a card. Player number two is going to play a green five there and draw a card. And player one, having a look at their hand, is going to play a purple eight there. Then, I'm going to put a three, red three there. 
and then back to player one. Now player one doesn't actually have the nine or the six to finish this color one run, this straight flush here. So they're gonna move on and start playing some things somewhere else. So they're gonna put a three across from their opponent's three. At which point their opponent is going to put a second three there. And player one is also going to put a second three there. Now this is where it gets dangerous. So the first person to get the final three to finish that off is going to take it. So player two decides to put his third eight down there, laying his cards on the table, so to speak. And player one decides to go over here and put a four there. there for player two and player one is going to put a second four there player two is going to put a blue seven there is going to put a blue one there. And then player two is going to put a green six there. Now, all three cards on both sides of the stone have been placed. And one of them is a this one here on this side is a run, a straight. It is a five, six, seven. But on this side, we have a flush, which is better than a run. So player two gets to take that stone. And that's how you play a game of shot and time. It's very quick. You go back and forth, you throw down cards. When all three cards on both sides of stone have been taken, you get the stone. But in some cases, you can, uh, prove before all the stones are put down on one side that you can take a stone. For instance, if you look over here, we have a one here. Now, if this player plays three ones on this spot, they can say, well, look, you have a seven and a nine that is blue, but the only eight of the only blue eight in the deck is already over here, which means you cannot get a color run. And the color run is the only thing that would beat my three of a kind right now over here. So I proved I can get it. I'll take this stone, even though that player two has not played all three cards on that side of the stone. And that's how it works. That's how a game of shot and tot and plays. So now let's head back. I'm going to tell you about how it feels. I'm going to rate it and review it. And then we're going to get a second opinion from Lynn. So that's how you play a game of shot and tot. Now, this is a, a quick game, but it's fun. I mean, I, I like this game. It, it's got a back and forth feel to it. You're throwing down cards. It, it can go real quick, especially once you've played a few games. It's just like play, draw, other person, play, draw, play, draw. And it's just, it's got a, a rhythm to it. It's a really great filler game to play between larger games or on a night when it's just you and someone else and you're playing a bunch of two player abstract games. This is a cool two player abstract card game. Uh, I recommend this to anyone to have in their two-player game stable if they have a lot of nights where it's just them and one other person playing two-player games. I really enjoy having this game, uh, and it's definitely going to stay on my shelf. So that being said, I give Shot and Totten 7 
out of 10 stars because I really like it. I'll play it anytime anybody wants and I'm going to I'm going to ask to play it many times in the future as well. But let's get a second opinion. Lynn, how many stars out of 10 would you give to Schottentaten? Seven. So Lynn also gave it a seven, so she quite liked it as well, and will play it any time I ask to play it. So there you have it. So that's a two thumbs up review for Schottentaten. Both Lynn and I enjoyed this, and, and this game is going to come out on our table many times in the future. Now, I just want to clarify, the only reason I didn't give it uh, a higher rating is because of, of it being a lighter game. And I do feel like even though lighter games can be a lot of fun and be really quick to play, that sometimes without having a whole lot of meat to sink your teeth into, I can't go, you know, eight or, or nine unless it's phenomenal, unless it's a really phenomenal game. And this is a really good game and I really do like it and I do recommend it, but it's a really quick and light game. But that being said, it's really fun. It's five minutes to learn this game. And then you're going to have a lot of fun with it. You'll have hours and hours of fun with this game, playing it again and again. It is the sort of game that once you play it once, you're going to be like, hey, you want to play a second game of Shot and Taunton? So there you have it. So do you have any questions or comments either on Shot and Taunton or on this video? Please put them down below. And if you like this video and want to see me do more like it, as always, please, please, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, game on.